Welcome to MRE Uncut, where we'll give you real and practical insights into the real estate scene in Melbourne. We'll discuss what's happening in the industry, all backed by MRE's history of over 30 years in the game. With that said, let's jump into this week's episode of MRE Uncut. Welcome back to another MRE podcast. My name's Stephen Fitzsimon and I'm with Peter Hoymans. Hello, Steve-o. Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're talking about uh, something that was talked about in our business quite some time ago. We call it the youth policy. Mm. We stole that. It's not ours. Yeah. Who did you steal it from? Clarko. Clark. Is that okay if I say that? You talked to care. me about I don't Hawthorne. Care if he cares. I reckon 70% of the time that I've been at MRE. Will, do you think that that'll decline now that Hawthorne's rubbish again? Mate. Yeah, we could start talking about our Carlton. rebuild is extraordinary. You right. wait, okay? Like we are, it's only years. We are coming. Years. We are coming. Was one Most of our successful club in, in fifty years. In Talk the to the hand, mate. Okay. Well, um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So we, we did bandy that term. Yep. It's a Clarko term. Okay, but it it comes from at its core uh, a seminar. I think you probably call it. It was a group gathering at BLA Business for Leadership Advantage, which was a little, um, it was a little school at the time. I'm actually not sure it's still going or, or, um, I think it's evolved. Yeah, I'm not sure else, what's right? happened there, but it was in Cremorne and Clarker was a guest speaker, uh, and Jeremy Clarkson. No, Alistair Clarkson. Right. Oh, right. Idiot. Okay. Sorry. And, uh, and Cl- I don't want, I don't like Clark- Jeremy Clarkson. Bloody, what's that thing? Farm. English. Top farm gear show. or whatever Stupid. it is. Right. Anyway. Clarko was talking about lots of things cultural about the Hawthorne Footy Club um, and how they how they use a, a stoplight system at the time, which was green, red, amber. So at the end of the game, um, you would have to sit with Clarko and and he would say, "How did you go on Saturday?" And I remember one of the one of the players. I won't name the player, but I'm having a chat with him over a glass one time, and he had something like 39 touches. And he, he so green was you did well, red uh, amber yeah, was average, fair, fair. Just, red was terrible. And um and he said uh and he said I was walking in the meeting thinking you know I definitely is a green you know I got 39 touches, kick three, and and uh, Clarko rated him as a as a, a red because it, it was you know two an awakening uh, just two things he did that were. One percent is that he he should have should have done as part the of the game. So he's pretty ruthless. Happen. Is the point I'm trying to make? Right. Um, in his assessment and his coaching, I don't think you see a lot of that. Uh, and again, I'm not privy to the inner sanctum of the Hawthorne Footy Club, but just stories I've heard. the The talk I went to, he specifically spoke about the rebuild of Hawthorne after maybe it was 06 or 07 or whatever it was, um, maybe it was 05, where they just had a singular focus on their youth policy, bring in some young talent. We, I mean, it might have been bottom of the ladder. They probably had to. After, after you know, fantastic 80s and 90s. Hmm. And we recruited, just from memory, I think it was Jordan Lewis and Jared Ruffhead and Lance Franklin and... Yeah, Sammy Mitchell. Amazing years of recruiting. Yeah, the yeah. gun of guns. Um, and back then they were all 21, 22, 23. And post that, listening uh, to Clarko talk about all of that journey in the footy club, which I'm going to say was around, when did I, when did I come in and tell you I'd done that? Was it 212? Oh, it was 2, 2, 11, 2, 12, somewhere yeah, there. When, yeah. when it was we, early on. Mm. And I said to you, we need to do what Hawthorne's doing. Literally. Yeah. And and you sort of looked at me and said, what do you mean? I said, we need to do it. We need to have a youth policy. And and we need to bring people through that. And I, I don't think this is any like flashing, uh, you know, brilliant idea for uh, as, real, as agents go or any business. Everyone likes to bring through new talent. And, and obviously that means young people. But uh, I, I don't think we'd ever had a really strong focus on it until that point um and then we we actively started to to make that a a big deal in i think in, we in saw it business. Yeah. we saw it because it, if you if you look at some of the roles that we we're trying to fill at that time were sort of um 
property management type roles and you'd, you'd get somebody that came and they'd come with baggage and because we, that as well. we were doing things differently, mm -hmm. it, it, it our procedure around rent reviews or advertising, whatever it was, was significantly different and still is significantly different from what people who were bedded down property managers would be used to. And they've got to unlearn and relearn. And that's sort of harder as you get older and you become less willing perhaps to do it that way. So I think we've sort of adopted to that. Well, if you can get them and teach them from the ground up and bring them through the business, then they're indoctrinated in, in MRE and what we do from the start. And therefore they're true believers. It sounds like a cult. <laughs> well, indoctrinated. Yeah. It's a bit of a cult word, isn't it? Yeah. I reckon we were a bit of a cult there for a while yeah. to some degree. Yeah. So, so the baggage thing is interesting. Mm. Um, that has always been an issue. I mean, I, I can only talk from my point of view as being in real estate for 30 odd years. Uh, I'm sure it happens like, so for example, you know, if you're in the travel, if you're a travel agent, does it, does, and you're hiring a travel agent, do they bring baggage from I reckon flight they center? Would. Probably. Yeah. If you're working for Qantas and you're employing someone from Bonza, yeah. Yeah. do they bring baggage? They probably do. They probably lost the baggage. You got to pay for it. Yeah, they've lost. Yeah, you got to pay for it, and they've lost yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, and damaged it. Yeah. So you know what I mean. So I think that's a common thing across probably, probably all industries. Is. People bring, you know, oh, we. This is how we used yeah, to do it. Yeah, I've never it. done it like that. Yeah. So the beauty of the fresh minds is is a blank canvas. Mm. Have a really fresh approach. There's no constraints on on um, how we could shape them. Yeah. Or help, or not necessarily shape them, but help them to shape themselves. Within, yeah. Get within. the most out of their career in real estate. Yeah. So that's, that's a bit, if I, if we look at the real estate work as a whole, if, if you're doing what Bronte does, if you're doing what the sales agents are doing in terms of, if you're doing all of these opens, all of this communication, that's it. That's a, a pretty challenging role for anybody to take up on a day like today when it's 38 degrees and you're out there meeting 10 people at each open from the morning until mm, 6.30 I had to cancel my opens today. Yeah. I said I had to call in sick. Yeah, see, so that's why you don't do opens at yeah, MRE, Pete. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. That's part of it. It but, is a bad day to do opens, though. It's not <laughs> but fun, yeah, it? but they're out there. Mm. They're out there. Like it's it, the if you, if you consider, I, I still remember doing opens and it was this was in the era many moons ago where it was so hot, I did an open in the art. The board complex. melted in your hand. No, I went into it and I sweated through my shirt. Like it was, because yeah. it was, it would, it was a 40 degree day. Yeah. And I reckon in that West facing apartment, when I went in there, it would have been. That's a visual I don't. It's really. disgusting. But it, we didn't, you know, that was the way it was. You just get on with it and do it. Yeah. yeah. But you can't, you don't want to do that. Um, later on, you get that's why you know if you're looking at the youth thing, they're they're going through that and they're growing and they're learning all of that face to face customer service, they're learning all of that aspect there and then early days, um, and then it it opens them up to then being able to reflect on that time and and manage groups that are that are performing those tasks in the so, future. So you know even now we've got I was looking at some of our age brackets the other day, uh, as part of writing a piece on the talent in the business. Yep. I'm not, I can't really think of other offices our size. Well, in our vicinity anyway, that would have, would have an average age that we have, which would be below 30. Yeah. Uh, would have to be. Oh, see, yeah. I'd say Might even be below 27. I don't know. Well, if you took us two out of it, it'd be. Oh, if you took out 21. the top five old yeah. oldies, yeah. It's, yeah, it would be young. But when, interestingly, the, the, the young age is, let's say, um, young Sov yep. is 22, uh, been with us, it's two years, I'm going to roughly oh, guess. So it could be more than could that. could be more than that. And um, and she's well and truly one and a half years into her sales career. Yeah. Um, the other one that sprang to mind, of course, was Ella, yeah. who is only 20. Two or three, yeah. How old are you, M? M's twenty three. Twenty two and a half. I okay. Think. Yeah. And uh, and then we have Iz. 
Oh, yeah, Iz. Well, Iz came straight after school. Iz was 18. She was 18, walked yeah. in the door. So, so she's she started on she's reception. She's getting old now. Yeah, yeah. She's 24, been there yeah. with her six years, which yeah. is – so that youth policy um, has really worked for us from the point of view of starting, you know, getting in the door. Obviously, there's some mistakes that get made, but then we've got the support and the um, more mature – you know, the people have been around a bit longer to help them to grow. But they bring you so much energy. Like, you know, for, for me – you know, I'm energised by interacting with them just because they come in and they're bouncing off the walls. They're definitely tiring. Yeah. 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 But I, I like it. I, I, I'm tired by the yeah, end of the day, I but it's, you, know, you feed off it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think that it, they, they're sponges for learning. Yep. They're, they're fantastic to teach. Oh, mate, I, the other night I sent a one-liner to Flynn about customer service. Uh, I think I sent this to Nat actually for a look. And he sent me back an essay about customer service and, 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 and can we do the next, can we do, when can we do our customer service podcast? Yeah. I was like, oh, jeez, Okay. And it was, yeah, it was extraordinary. Yeah. Cause it's it, young, young and keen as they say, mate. Yeah. Super enthusiastic. Mm. And so they, they're sponges for learning. They're, um, they're trying to get somewhere fast. They're all super keen to, to develop. They always are asking for more information, more progression. Um, do you think that they've sort of. Um, do you think that they push too hard too early as a, as a yeah, good question? Uh, do you know, I think I see a real difference between the people we had in the business 10 years ago. So now they would be in their mid to late thirties Yep. and the newcomers today that are in their 20 to th say 22 to th 28. Yeah. And I, and then I'm looking at some of the kids that are already pestering me for a job that are 15 or 16, yeah. they know that they've got a couple of years to wait. They're different again. The difference I think is like, for example, I'm reasonably tech savvy, but the for speed an old at bloke. which, for an old bloke, yeah. But the speed at which the new generation, and I'm, I'm talking about the 15, 16 year olds can operate five or six or eight apps all at once and Snapchat, TikTok, Instagram, message, WhatsApp, and text is just incredible. Encompass. Right? Now, is it healthy? I don't, I'm not really sure. There's a thing called digital dementia, subject for another day. Oh. But they are definitely faster than the current crop of kids between 22 and 28. And they're a lot faster than the kids that are, that, that, well, they're not kids anymore, but when they were starting with us in, say, early 2000s. Yeah. That, that are now, now in their mid 30s. to late thirties, they're way slower. Yeah, like you, you send a text, you get you know a two liner back. Whereas these kids, you send a text, you get five different things back. You get links. To, yeah. to Google, you get statistics that have been pulled from somewhere. You get a John Hopkins report from. It's unbelievable. Yeah, they're exploiting the knowledge that they've gained through technology during yeah. their schooling. I presume. So they're born with an app. They're born with an iPhone in their yeah. hand. Yeah, popped out with an iPhone and an iPad. So Which is, you know, that's awkward. Bearing thought. in mind, they're definitely awkward. <laughs> bearing in mind, so we're talking about kids that are born in 06, 07, and 08. Hmm. The iPhone was only invented in 07. Was it 07? When it was 07. Made? I first remember when iPhone the, 1 the was 07. So it didn't even get good till 2010. Yeah. So, yeah, I do. I notice quite a difference. Um, which is really interesting. Uh, we've got a couple of youngsters starting in studio. Next yeah. week. Yeah. And I'll be interested. It'll be really interesting to see. Because they're, they're raw. They're, they're coming. Super raw. Yeah. And it'll just be interesting to see ha what they're like in the tech side of things. Yeah. Um, because the tech's also, I for me, it's become a little bit more complicated. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's supposed to be simplified, but it, for me it's not. Um, so... It'll, it'll be interesting. Yeah. We'll just see. Is that, yeah. Is that just getting older? So the tech could, becomes more could, complicated. Could be that, mate. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I'm so I mean that, be that without having a crack. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm the same. Like, you know, you get a new program, you're like, oh, I've got to work out how to Have figure you? out all this sort of stuff. Yeah. And, and sometimes they, they're really intuitive. Cause so, I think that was the Apple shift, right? Everything mm. became intuitive on Apple. I was talking to Paul Hofer from Connect Now, good friend, good. Uh, business acquaintance of ours who does all our services and 
Paul and I were talking last night about the new connection technology they're yeah. bringing out, yeah, which is not far away. Portal, um, you know, sort of robot driven AI. It's all basically you don't have to do anything to compare your power bills. You just basically push the button, it does it all for you. And we finished the conversation. He's mid 40s, so he's in that older gen, uh, obviously super tech savvy. And he, he, he just said, um, it's all happening very, very fast, maybe a little bit too fast. And I sort of feel the same. Like it's, it's like not only has the technology ramped, but the speed of, of the new tech now mm. is even exponentially greater than it was five years ago. It's probably double what it was five years before that. Yeah. You know, it's, I went to a REA conference mm. and they, and they said, you know, there was some futurist, I can't remember who it was, but he's been on a few of the REA ones. I'm sure if there's agents watching this, they'll know who I'm talking about. But he, he sat down and he said, um, do you think things are moving fast now? And he goes, because right now is the slowest that's ever going to be for the rest of your life. Yeah. You know, when, and when, that, that got me. When was that? Oh, I reckon eight years ago. Oh, there you go. Yeah. You know, so, so, so a, a fair while. Yeah. But it's stuck mm. because it, he, that's the nature. There's mm. new apps for everything. And, it, you know, you, unless you're communicating with the younger generation, it takes older people six to 12 months to find out about the app, let alone use it. Do you know what I mean? Like they're, and and there's, they're using a whole realm of these different things to make their life easier. So youth um, policy um, youth policy stems back in a lot of ways now to tech because our industry has been completely upended in a good way. Um, but, I mean, you know, three years ago, four years ago, you know, being able to just come to a podcast studio, it's already set up to go. Um, you know, you, you know, we've got Pat here doing our sound mixing. It's all professional, soundproof, fantastic. That didn't exist. No. Um, uh, being able to do fantastic 4K videos on your iPhone didn't exist. No. Uh, so the the tech in the real estate industry, I find as well, you, you know, you can't resist it because obviously it's made us more efficient. Yeah. Back in the day, you know, you're driving from house to house to get things initialed. Yeah. Which I kind of still like that whole tactile Personal way of touch. doing business. Yeah. Yeah, but now it's a what is it a docu sign? Yeah, they get a notification. You know if they've opened it, viewed it, clicked it, yeah, touch the glass, and you're done. Yeah. So, um, so that's interesting. So these kids that come through that, through that system, and and then and then join us at say age nineteen or twenty, they've got a they're going to evaluate. Head, it's a big head start. Yeah. Yeah. So, I think that's how the youth. The youth thing came out for us at MRE anyway was to, you know, just keep injecting. Inge um, I was just going to use that word, yeah, injecting enthusiasm, um, tech, energy, tech, tech savvy, uh, smarts, smarts, enthusiasm, willing to learn, wanting to grow, because that's really our games are openness. Our games are high energy game. Yep, and yeah, young and keen is the go. So that's us. That's it. Thanks Peace for policy. another one. Yeah. See everyone. Thank you.